Welcome back everybody. I've got an awesome video for you guys today. I'm gonna to take these 3D printers that I usually only print parts on and just print plastic stuff on. I'm gonna print a part and we're gonna do a mold out of it. Yes. So I have been itching to use this molding stuff for a while, so now I finally get a chance to do it. So I had a customer come to me and they brought me a part that was 3D printed. I don't know what kind of machine it was printed on or anything like that, but this part goes to a steel anchor cranker. It's a machine to crank anchors in the ground for linemen and things like that. So this is the part right here. You can see they had this printed in two different materials on a 3D printer and it broke. I think one of them was PETG, one of them was nylon. So I thought the best case scenario would be to print this part out and we're gonna take some silicone here and we're gonna make a little mold box. We're gonna pour silicone in it. We're gonna pull the part out and that's gonna leave us with the mold. Then we're gonna take and we're gonna pour some resin in there. And I'm going to mix some color in with it so when we mix it up, you can see that it's mixed together really well. So I'm super, super excited to do this. I've had this silicone and this stuff sitting here for a while. I've just been waiting for a good reason to use it. This just came upon me and I was like, great, so now I can use it. So here we go. I'm gonna show you guys how I did it. I hope I didn't mess anything up. Hopefully it turns out well and you guys can learn something too. Here we go. Now what I did was open up Fusion 360 and I am a complete noob when it comes to this stuff. I do not know how to model things, but I know well enough to be able to make this simple little piece right here. So I made this and it made it extrude and put a little notch in it there, but I didn't even end up using those notches. And then I just have to export it as STL. I can open it up in my slicer, print the file, and I'll print four of them, and then that gives me a box. So I open mine up in Super Slicer, slice the file quickly and print it, and that gives me a makeshift mold box, but this can be done multiple other ways, it's just a box. Let's not forget, safety first. I've got my box clipped together here now with these four clips. What I want to do is take this part that's sitting here and I want to put this in the center and we're going to tape it on and fill it up with silicone. I started trying using some clear tape, but it did not look like it was going to work. So I ended up going with this blue painter's tape stuff here, sticking to the bottom. Use your finger or some sort of item here to press down on the bottom of that tape really good. You do want to make sure your part that you're molding it looks really well. I've kind of went over this a little bit with some acetone, smooth it up, and make sure you don't have any dents or scrapes or anything in it, because that is going to show up in the mold. So clean it up real good. I'm going to use the tape here to stick it and hold it down. As my first attempt, I did learn you do need to do this, because it will float. Just press down on it really well. Make sure it sticks to the bottom real good, so it ain't going to come loose on you. Let's get our silicone ready to mix up here. The silicone is going to have a part A and a part B. It's mixed at a ratio of one to one. So 50% one, 50% other, mix them, stir them. That's pretty much it. So this is a brand I have. It's called Let's Resin A and B. And I have purchased this other kind. Also, I haven't tried it out yet, but I'm sure it's pretty much the same. The second one here did come with some extra stuff. It's got a little cutter in here, some instructions, some gloves, and things like that. So I will link in the description both of these that I have purchased. If you have yourself a nice little scale like this, if not, they're very cheap, that can measure in grams, what I did here is measured out 10 grams of the A and 10 grams of the B, and we're gonna mix them together. Okay, let's get some pretty color in here. So I got this stuff, it's called Mika or Mica powder. It's type of powder that you can put in with your silicone to add color to it. Now this part is not required, but for me, since both parts A and B 
are the same color, you can't really tell once you have them mixed up really well. So adding color to it like this, whatever color it may be, is going to let you know when it's mixed together well. Once you start stirring it and mixing it, it'll help you know when it's mixed. And me mixing this stuff up super, super fast is always nice. I wish I was that quick. <laughs> I think we got a pretty good consistency here. It looks really well mixed. The color's nice and smooth all the way through. Now this probably goes without saying, but try to put something underneath your area that you pour this because the silicone does love to get everywhere through little crevices and things. So just try to protect yourself there a little bit. Put something underneath there. Now it's time to pour it in here. And also I was told after I already done this that what you probably should do is start in a corner, the lowest corner, and pour it there. And you can see here I kind of went around when I did it. And also since mine has a hole in the center, you do want to fill that area up as well. So mine, I have to let it sit for 24 hours. I don't know what type of silicone you might use, but just read the instructions on it. So we let this stuff sit for 24 hours, then we'll come back to it. Now we're back to it. Let's see how it turned out. It has been sitting for over 24 hours now, and it is stuck to the table. <laughs> so we're going to try to get this off easily without breaking it. Tap on it a little bit. Yeah, it's stuck pretty good. All right, it wasn't super glued to the table. So let's get this stuff cleaned up and pull the tape off and we'll see if I got ourselves a nice mold out of it. I'm gonna pull this off nice and slow and smooth so I don't rip it. I didn't know how strong the silicone was, but it's pretty tough stuff, so. But it came off pretty well. Let's go through here and cut all this stuff off with X-Acto. I don't know what they call this. I would call it flashing in the metal type business, but not sure with silicone. Now I gotta take this part out of this mold. So I just push on it, wiggle, twist, turn, whatever you gotta do to get it out of there. This part in particular wasn't too hard to get out, but it wasn't overly easy either. And give your mold just a little inspection to make sure everything looks all good. Time for the fun part, the epoxy resin. So mine is a deep pour epoxy resin, which is really not necessary for this case, but it's what I had. So this one mixes two to one. So I need to mix 10 grams of the B and 20 grams of the A to get me 30 grams total and mix them together. So these are ready to be mixed up now, so I'm going to add a little bit of that mica, mica powder stuff, the powder, to color it. So I got a little bit of silver I'm just going to add in with this. Now you want to stir this stuff up until you're happy, or in this case, until the powder gets all mixed and blended in there really well, which that's the reason, kind of reason I added it to this. It didn't have to be colored, but it does help a lot when seeing if it's mixed. Now we can pour this resin. Let's just do it nice and slow. Let it fill up itself all the way around and it filled up at the very top, but without overfilling it.
So here's our mold after it's done casted. Let's see how this thing turns out. We're gonna see if we can take it out of here. Hopefully everything comes out and everything worked out good. So this looks like it turned out pretty good. So we're gonna see if we can get it out of here without tearing up the mold or doing anything bad like that. Feels pretty solid. Hopefully it works out all right. We just kind of push around the edges here to break it loose all the way around the outside. Then we'll try to go around the inside as well and see if we can get it unstuck from the resin there a little bit. This particular mold, I didn't have to put a cut down the side of it. I was able to turn it inside out like this, which helps a lot. But in other cases, you might have to cut a slit down the side and kind of rubber band it together. All right, looks like it come right out of there. And it actually is a little bit soft. I wouldn't say soft is the word here, but it did kind of make an oblong feel there. So it wasn't quite cured all the way, but it was supposedly good for the demolding time, said 24 hours, and this has been setting for about 35. So it should be fine, but it does have to cure for the rest of the time, which I believe this thing said 72 hours. So it's got quite a long cure time. Other than that, I believe, ladies and gentlemen, we can call this a success. Very nice. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. Like and subscribe for me and I'll see y'all next time.